Hello there, friends. It's Miss Stephanie from the Chester Public Library back with another at home story time. So I want to make sure in this story time that you really see the pictures in some of these books. So you might not see my head and face all the time, but I think it's important for you to focus on the pictures because some of these books, you really need to see the pictures more than hear the words to really understand the story. So I brought the camera a little bit closer to me. So you might not see me all the time and that's okay. It's more important for you to see the pictures. So let's get started. Today's first book is called Trouble Gum by Matthew Cordell. I read this with my niece the other day and she laughed really hard and I think it's very fun. So I want to read it to you today. It has really cool sound effects and very fun pictures. So this is Trouble Gum by Matthew Cordell. The trouble at the Figs house began one rainy day when Grammy was over for tea. Mom was knitting a blanket for Julius. Reuben stared out the window in the living room. Pit pat, pit pat, pit pat, pit pat. Aw, Mom, Reuben said. When's the rain gonna end? Not for a while, Reuben. Why don't you play with Julius? Pit pat, pit pat, pit pat, pit pat, pit pat, pit pat. Julius was playing his cars and trucks. Reuben played along. Watch this, Julius. I'm an ambulance. Reuben, can you be a little quieter? Mom asked. Reuben played super pig. Reuben always got to be super pig. Julius was always his sidekick, Squeal. Come on, Squeal, to the rescue, Reuben shouted. Thump. Reuben, mom yelled, settle down. Grammy had an idea, gum. Gum wasn't often allowed. It tended to make a mess. You know the rules, mom said. Don't swallow your gum, don't play with your gum, and don't blow big sticky bubbles with your gum. Be careful. Reuben loved chewing. This is how the big pigs chew, Julius, Reuben said between smacks. He swapped sides, first all left shoes, then all right shoes. He chewed lying down. He chewed balancing on his head. He chewed in super slow motion. He chewed in full tip fast motion. But, uh oh. I accidentally swallowed my gum. Can I have another piece, Grammy? Reuben asked. Good gravy, Mom said. You only had that gum two minutes and you've already broken the rules. I'm sorry, there will be no more gum for you today. Please, Reuben begged. I promise not to swallow another one. Give him one more chance, dear, Grammy said. You swallowed many a piece of gum when you were a piglet. Mom reluctantly agreed. Crinkle, 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 crinkle. I'll just sit and chew, Reuben thought, wrapping up a, in a warm blanket. This is how the big pigs stretch a piece of gum, Julius, Reuben said. I hope you're not playing with your gum, Reuben, said Mom. If you do, the gum will go right to the trash. And let's put my new blanket back on the chair, okay? But Reuben couldn't stop yet. Just one more, Julius. Reuben whispered, Mom won't know. You hold this this end. Hang on, Julius. Snap. Uh-oh. Not in Mom's blanket, Reuben cried. For 
Fortunately, this wasn't the first piece of gum Ruben had gotten stuck in mom's knitting. He knew just what to do. Pull, stretch, yank. Ruben, my blanket, mom yelled. No more gum, mom said. No more gum, Ruben mumbled. However, a good pig, Julius. Ever see me blow a bubble? Reuben asked. This is how the big pigs blow a bubble, Julius. Reuben was still learning. But on his next try, he blew a bubble as big as a juice box. Watch this, Julius. I'm a natural. Really. He blew a bubble as big as a birdhouse. Hey, let's see what we can do with three pieces, said Reuben. Look out for mom, okay? He blew a bubble as big as great uncle stew. But, Reuben! Pop! Rub dub dub, scrub a dub dub. Reuben, fetch Grammy's purse. It's time to say, Goodbye, Mom said. Then, Julius shouted, Mom. yelled Reuben. It tended to make a mess. That is trouble gum. All right, let's sing a song about the weather. If all the raindrops were lemon drops and gum drops, oh, what a world it would be. Standing outside with my mouth open wide. Ah, 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 if all the raindrops were lemon drops and gum drops. Oh, what a world it would be. All right, you ready to learn the second verse? This is a wintry verse. So instead of if all the raindrops were lemon drops and gum drops, we're gonna sing if all the snowflakes were candy bars and milkshakes. Okay, let's try it. If all the snowflakes were candy bars and milkshakes, oh, what a world it would be. Standing outside with my mouth open wide. Ah, 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 If all the snowflakes were candy bars and milkshakes, oh, what a world it would be. All right, let's try them both. So we're gonna start with the verse about the raindrops, and then we're gonna go to the verse about the snowflakes. Ready? One, two, three. If all the raindrops were lemon drops and gum drops, oh, what a world it would be. Standing outside with my mouth open wide. Ah, 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 ah. If all the raindrops were lemon drops and gum drops, oh, what a world it would be. If all the snowflakes were candy bars and milkshakes, oh, what a world it would be. Standing outside with my mouth open wide. Ah, 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 ah. If all the snowflakes were candy bars and milkshakes, oh, what a world it would be. All right, great job, friends. Now we know two different parts to that song. And we're going to get to book number two. All right, so this is a book a lot of you may know. It is a classic book called The Snowy Day by Ezra Jack Keats. We did this last year at our in-library story time, but it seems like a good time to bring it back. It's not snowy here right now. We got a lot of rain that washed away our snow, but this is a good book for the season. And my husband asked me if I read this book today. I said, you mean the snowy day? Let's read it. So this is The Snowy Day by Ezra Jack Keats. One winter morning, Peter woke up and looked out the window. 
Snow had fallen during the night. It covered everything as far as he could see. After breakfast, he put on his snowsuit and ran outside. The snow was piled up very high along the street to make a path for walking. Crunch, 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 his feet sank into the snow. He walked with his toes pointing out like this. He walked with his toes pointing in like that. Then he dragged his feet slowly to make tracks. And he found something sticking out of the snow that made a new track. It was a stick. A stick that was just right for smacking a snow-covered tree. Down fell the snow, plop, on top of Peter's head. He thought it would be fun to join the big boys in their snowball fight, but he knew he wasn't old enough. Not yet. So he made a smiling snowman and he made angels. He pretended he was a mountain climber. He climbed up a great big hill, heaping mountains of snow and slid all the way down. He picked up a handful of snow and another and still another he packed it round and firm and put the snowball in his pocket for tomorrow. Then he went into his warm house. He told his mother all about his adventures while she took off his wet socks. And he thought, and he thought, and he thought about them. Before he got into bed, he looked in his pocket. His pocket was empty. The snowball wasn't there. He felt very sad. While he slept, he dreamed that the sun had melted all the snow away. But when he woke up, his dream was gone. The snow was still everywhere and new snow was falling. After breakfast, he called to his friend from across the hall and they went out together into the deep, deep snow. That's the snowy day by Ezra Jack Keats. All right, that's two books that we did. Let's go to our second song. Let's sing about a dog named Bingo. If you know this song, you know that it gets a little tricky and we start clapping and it helps us practice our letters. And if you don't know it, you can join in when you, when you kind of think you know how to do it. So B-I-N-G-O spells bingo. Let's do it. There was a farmer who had a dog and Bingo was his name. Oh, B-I-N-G-O, 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 and Bingo was his name. Oh, there was a farmer who had a dog and Bingo was his name. Oh, I-N-G-O, 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 and Bingo was his name. Oh. There was a farmer who had a dog and Bingo was his name-o. N-G-O, N-G-O, N-G-O and Bingo was his name-o. There was a farmer who had a dog and Bingo was his name-o. G-O, G-O. G-O and Bingo was his name-o. There was a farmer who had a dog and Bingo was his name-o. O, O, O and Bingo was his name-o. There was a farmer who had a dog and Bingo was his name-o. And Bingo was his name-o. There was a farmer who had a dog and Bingo was his name-o. B-I-N-G-O, 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 and Bingo was his name-o. We made it to the whole song. Did you follow along with us? It's okay if you didn't, Bingo's a tricky one, but the more we do it and the older you get, the better you'll get because if we practice, we can get better at any skill. All right, our last book today is called The Red Shoes. 
A Dazzling Journey by Karen English, illustrated by Ebony Glenn. Do you see why it's called The Red Shoes? Let's find out together. The Red Shoes. Red Shoes Dazzling. Perched on a pedestal in the shop window as if on a throne. I want those, Nana, Malika says to her grandmother as they pass the shop. We'll see, Nana says with a wink. Looks like you could use a new pair. Surprise! Red Shoes nestled in a shoe box under tissue paper on the kitchen table. Nana smiles with her secret smile. Malika laughs and slips them on quick, quick. Red Shoes walking, click, clack, click, across the floor on Malika's feet. Swish, 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 around the living room. Click, clack, click, down the hall. Then out of the door and around the block, Malika goes to show off her new red shoes. Carefully, carefully on the first day of school, Malika walks in big galoshes that hide her shoes from the rain. She wants to keep them dry when she jumps in puddles. Red shoes dancing on daddy's feet when they go to auntie's wedding in the fall. Red shoes kicking cousin Jamal under the table at Nana's Christmas dinner as he tries to snitch Malika's buttery biscuit. Red shoes stopping home when Malika and her best friend Keisha have a fight. Malika is mad and sticks to it. Red shoes jumping double dutch at Keisha's birthday party after they make up. Then, oh no! Red shoes pinching when Malika squeezes them on to wear to Nana's birthday dinner at a restaurant. My shoes are too small, Malika says sadly. And all through dinner, her red shoes don't let her forget that her feet have grown. Red shoes in the window at the resale shop where Nana and Malika have taken them to be resold so somebody else can enjoy them. Softly, softly, Malika says goodbye to her wonderful red shoes. They were her favorite shoes ever. Ina Zia spies the red shoes dazzling in the shop window. She knows just the little girl who will love them. Now they are squeezed into her luggage bound for Africa. Ina Zia smiles down at Amina. I promised you a gift and here it is. Red shoes are passed to Amina's waiting hands. Thank you, auntie, she says. They are so beautiful. Then later, red shoes riding on the tro, tro in Amina's lap. Back at home, Amina's little sister, Halima, rushes to see the gift for the girl who fasted half the month of Ramadan because someday she hopes to do the same. Meanwhile, back on the other side of the ocean, Malika wonders, whatever happened to my beautiful red shoes? I wonder if someone is wearing them right now. There they are, red shoes. What a sweet little book that is. All right, my friends, that's all I have for you today. Our three books, our two songs, and that's about it. Thanks for joining me again. And I hope you're staying safe. I hope you're staying healthy. And if you celebrated any holidays, I hope that they were lovely, even if they weren't the same as they always are. So stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for joining us. I'll see you next time.